So I'm this close to publishing a manuscript, you know, getting it out into the scientific community. And of course, with that comes all these nitpicky details that circulate back towards me. And that's what I'm going to touch on today. I have a precipitation timeline that I did in Excel. And my PI said, you've done all the other figures in our studio. So why not just create the simple figure of the precipitation timeline in our studio? And I thought, yeah, I can do that. And it's necessary, but it should be simple, right? Well, multiple hours later, you know, getting incredibly frustrated, I find myself barely creating the figure on time. So today I'm going to show you how to go from an Excel timeline and the necessary steps to duplicate it and make it in our studio. So as I just mentioned, this is the precipitation timeline. We're comparing on the top 2018 to the one on the bottom representing 2019. And this is done in Excel, but what we want to do is create this figure in our studio for both of them. And as I said, this can be very frustrating if you've never created a timeline before. Should just be geome line using ggplot. Well, there are some small extra steps that you need to notice and take care of and attention to before you're able to just simply spit out your line graph. And that's what we're gonna look at today. Okay, so I have my precipitation data loaded into its own uh, CSV file, which we're gonna upload here. It is called precipitation. Now, this next line is important because default R Studio will organize the month to month precipitation alphabetically. So before I show you um, how to organize it by months of the calendar year, I'm gonna give you an idea of what it looks like without that. So if we just make the plot, you see down here, it goes April, August, December, February, January, makes no sense. Took me a while to figure that out as well. So here's the simple step to fix that. You need to create a new column in your data sheet that you just uploaded. And I called it precipitation dollar sign month. Dollar sign indicates you're creating a new column within that uh, spreadsheet. You need to do it by, it has to be a factor. So factor, precipitation month, and the levels allow you to determine the order. So maybe you want it to start in the middle of the year, June, July, August, September, and so on, versus January, February, March, April, May, whatever. Whatever order you want, you need to have levels equals C, parentheses, and then in quotes for each month, or whatever order you're trying to create, you type it all up. It's tedious, but necessary. So if I run this, and then I make the plot again, now we can see I've got January, February, March, April, and so on, all the way to December, just how it's supposed to be. But wait, where's the line? Where are the points? Where's the data? I thought we made the first line of code, our data is precipitation, our aesthetic X is month, and why we're looking at the precipitation in 2019. There's no line. First, first big issue right there, how do we get the line in there? So if we add geom point, perhaps we can start seeing the data. Because if there is nothing on the chart, Maybe adding geom point will plot the points on the chart. So let's do that. And as we see, we have the points on our plot, but we have no line graph. It's just the, you can see the shape of the month to month precipitation, but that's not what we ultimately want. We want a time line, not a time point, a time line. So, 
here's the here's the main takeaway if you're all good to go at this point fine but this is the thing that you need to know when making a timeline in r the vital function of a line graph or a timeline in this instance is using group equals one in the first line of ggplot. So this is what it'll look like. ggplot, data, precipitation, aesthetics of the graph, x equals month, y equals 2019, same as before. Now we add an extra layer, group equals one. You can make group equals two, and those numbers indicate whether maybe it's a solid line, a dashed line, a line, dot, line, you know, variations of those lines. We're looking for just a solid line. I just picked group one, and that's what's worked for me. If you want to figure out what other numbers in the group setting there uh, depict, just Google that. So same as before, we added group equals one. And now we can finally see we have our line graph for 2019. Excellent but we still have grid lines and we, now we need to make it publishable. This is not currently a pretty figure that you would wanna publish. So what do we need to do? We need to doctor it up. Previous videos of mine talk about uh, adding a PNG so you can save it as a PNG file. Today, we're gonna to do something a little different that I think will also help and add and expand upon your repertoire in our studio. So we got, ggplot data precipitation the aesthetic is the month and 2019 is the y-axis group one makes that solid line we already know that we're doing a line graph hence geom line and geom point we want to increase the size of those points just a little bit to accentuate those data data points on the graph with the line going through them so size equals two theme classic We'll create a blank backdrop. We won't have any more grid lines. It's a lot more uh, publishable or, or what we would call a pretty figure. Y lab means the Y label. So what do you want to label your Y axis? For me, I want to say it's, 20, it's precipitation in 2019 in millimeters. You have to have the quotations for that. Theme. Well, we don't want any... Uh, x-axis titles because right down here on the bottom it says month well that's unnecessary we know it's month to month based on these certain lines january February, march all of that tells us it's a month to month plot so we don't need the month x-axis label so axis title x is blank that'll remove the, the month text from the graph Text equals element text. We want to increase the size because right now it's small. And if you were to export it and throw it up into a Word document or however you're going to publish it, the text would be quite small and hard to read in comparison to everything else you might have already done. So size equals 20. And then normally I would add a PNG and that's how you would save your PNG file. But we're not doing that today. And I'll get to what we're doing next, but I need to show you the precipitation timeline. Look at that. Size is 20 text. We don't have the month on the X axis as we depicted. And the point sizes are just a little bit larger so you can see them better. And the line remains the same. You could change line color. You could change line size and so on if you really wanted to. But for today, we're not doing that now. I can do the same with our 2018 precipitation plot. And we got our 2018 precipitation plot below. But when I exported these the first time and I stacked them on each other, they're slightly different sizes. Or when you stretch one, it doesn't look right. And uh, I wanted to expand and lengthen the timeline because this line looks a bit scrunched the text might overlap each other once it's exported and that's not pretty it's not legible um and you need to change that so how do we stretch the figure out without you know uh taking away a fundamental piece of the figure itself so how can we make it look good 
but how can we lengthen it to stretch the timeline out so that the text on the X axis does not overlap. And this is where GG save comes into, into hand. So much like adding PNG as a layer in your GG plot, you do GG save, but now you need to say file equals. And as you might notice, you take the direct path to that folder as we would normally in the plus PNG. We do that here, file equals, and this is the direct path to my folder where I want it to be. And then once you get to that folder, now is your chance to name the chart. For me, I wanted it to be 2019 precipitation chart. And then since I'm really close to publishing, I need to know that I'd made this figure in December of 2021 and then dot PNG. So that would in and of itself export the figure, but we haven't lengthened the X axis at all. And that's where width and height come into play. So we will make the width equal 12, the height equal four, and publishable figures often request a DPI of 300. So you can do that as well here, DPI equals 300. If you tried to do that in your GG plot, you would run into issues. So this is where GG save will save your plot. So let's do that. GG save with 12, height equals four. Play around with those numbers. It's gonna be different for each scale. Your plot might require something different. We create that file. Let's go into it. And it's in what folder? Drought net, and it's called 2019 precipitation chart. 2021. 2019 precipitation chart, December 2021. Here it is. Let's open that up. Let's bring it over. And as you can see here, we've stretched that axis out. Whereas if I didn't do that, let's just show you what happens if we don't do that. So we're not gonna do GG save here. We're just gonna run the GG plot, make it the PNG, and it's gonna show up in the same spot. What will that chart look like? It looks like this. The months are quite close together. It's very scrunched, it's very tall. We don't want that. That's not a pretty figure. And it's kind of hard to look at as far as the x-axis and really describing what's going on with the data. So that's why we need to do this GG save and adjust the parameters of our width and height in our plot. So that way we can run the figure and save it and make it nice and long without sacrificing the height and the, and the information that's being provided. Okay, but the last piece here, you might say, well, Matt, you had a red line on the chart here. How can we do that in R? I'm gonna just be straight up and honest. I don't know. I didn't wanna spend the time on it. Don't reinvent the wheel. I've said that before, I'll just keep saying it. We've done the line chart in R. It looks excellent but it's much more difficult to add, say this bracket and this line in R. So you need to bring this image into PowerPoint or your picture editing software of choice. And then you need to manually add the line and any other additional features that just quite frankly, aren't worth the headaches that you would go through to try and do it in R. So. As a wrap, that's a lot of information. I encourage you to go back chunk by chunk, go through the video. And this is a really good comprehensive way of understanding how to make a line graph or a timeline in R. So if you like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing, share it, comment. If you have an idea or would like to see a video done, leave a comment below. I try and get to those and I appreciate your time.